And we're back <laughs> with more of the Pope on Film, episode 176, Act 3, A New Hope. In which Doris gets this- her oats. <laughs> It is a period of civil war for the Pope on Film podcast. Rebel podcasters striking from Colorado and Oklahoma have won their first victory against the evil Trumpian Empire. During the battle, church organists managed to steal secret plans for the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Cast, an armored <laughs> podcast with enough power to destroy an entire fandom. Pursued by the Empire's sinister cabinet members, Bunny Williams races home aboard his glass pipe, custodian of the stolen plans that can save his podcast and restore freedom to the undead cows. Yes. Yes, my friend. This weekend begins an epic undertaking for the Pope on Film podcast. We will be attempting to spend the entire summer, pretty much, Watching every single Star Wars movie in a movement, a movement that we are officially calling, we've given it a catchy name, a real catchy name that, that we're, we're very, very proud of. Uh, it's, a, it's a snappy yes, title. Yes, it is. We're calling it 2018, The Summer of Star Wars. Every Star Wars movie, but maybe not that one Clone Wars animated movie that they did because yawn, but everything else, probably. <laughs> it's it's going to fit well on a bumper sticker. Yeah. And, and I just want to mention, I just want to mention, Natasha said, oh, you guys are doing every Star Wars movie? Are you doing it in order of? And I just barked out, release order. Yes. As God and nature intended. We're not doing... We're not doing Phantom Menace first. I don't want to kill myself. <laughs> and and therefore, this week's this week the Pope on Film is proud to present the little scene 1977 science fiction film Star Wars. Yes. Do 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 do. Now let's jump right into the history of Star Wars. So here's the situation. I found a bit of difficulty with this week's movie because this film is without a doubt one of the most well-known movies of all time, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, so I, so I have a hard time with things like that. Like, you give me Oogie Loves, I'll take the ball and fucking run with it. Yeah. You give me, you give me a, a ghost story, unfortunately, and I'll give you a great fucking podcast, but you hand me a really famous fucking movie. I don't know what to do with Casablanca that, that, that someone else hasn't already heard on another podcast. You know? This is Star Wars. Everybody knows Star Wars. What can I do to make it different? Yes. You know? How do I do something new, something original, something different with the most well-known franchise in the history of franchises? So... In writing the history of the original Star Wars film, I asked for help. Everyone I know who has never seen Star Wars. So, okay. so I, so I, I got all of the people that I know who who have never seen Star Wars before, and I had them tell me the history of Star Wars, and I compiled it together. I'm very proud of this. It's uh, the the official, one hundred percent accurate. History of Star Wars, Bunny. Feel free to add your own tidbits here because I know you're also a huge Star Wars fan. I uh, yes, I mean, I mean, it's such a part. I mean, I, I I was I am first generation Star Wars. You know, yeah, I was still enough of a kid for it, it to get me. Yeah, Star Wars was the brainchild of writer director George Foreman. Yes, he actually. He actually created these uh, little sci-fi films just as an excuse to make a lot of money, which he could then turn around into a grilling empire. And that is what I was going to say. The original script was was hand-seared by George into countless burgers. Yeah. Yeah, the original burgers. title for Star Wars was actually Star Fisters. Uh huh. And the good guys were just fisting the bad guys. There was a lot of fisting. The original script was way different. In the original script, 
it was all about a young man named Johnny Starpants. Yes. And Johnny Starpants would fist the evil stormtroopers, who, it, it should be noted in the original script, the, the stormtroopers were all dolphins. Well, they called him Johnny Starpants because he really wore, wore those big, fluffy, almost parachute-like pants, you know? Yeah, uh, so, uh, MC Hammer pants. Yeah, so nobody can no, nobody can tell what might be going on with his his star rod. Yeah. His throbbing hard star rod. You yeah, know, so and, they called him star pants because, you know, yeah. Yeah. And his pants were so big, too, that they would act like a sort of parachute. So you, you push him off of a big building and stuff, and he just starts flying around like uh, the sponge who could fly. Yeah. And, and, and also, let's not forget the droids. The two droids, of course, are, were um, Robetty Blip Bloop and Trash Can Sinatra. Yes. Yes. Thought that it was a trash bold can move Sinatra to, was so little cute. trash can Sinatra. I thought it was a bold move to have Frank Sinatra voice him. Uh yes, it was. Even though, well, he wasn't dead at the time. Yeah, I, I forget my timelines. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, we've got to hide from the Imperial troops. You said it, dollface. Is there any place I can get a fucking drink on this planet? Shit. <laughs> we need to get this message back to the queen. Yeah, I need to find my friend Sammy. He's a real good Jew. <laughs> the original script was way differently. Originally, Obi Wan Kenobi was named Oogie Loves Cannoli, and he was mad racist. Yeah. He was crazy racist. You must learn the ways of the Force if you were to come with me to Alderaan to get rid of all the Jews there. <laughs> and then Johnny Starpants is all like, whoa, why are you taking it to a racial place? That's not cool. Yeah. Why do you Use have to the Force, there, Johnny Starpants, before the coloreds show up. <laughs> whoa, Scanoli, you are mad racist. That's a famous line. It's a famous line. Oh, and also, uh, Oogie Loves Cannoli would vape constantly. Oh. That joke was written by Deanna, and she made me put it in the show. Nice. I always appreciate a good drug reference. Yeah. Vaping constantly. Originally, Princess Leia, Princess Leia, they pronounce her name like three different ways in this movie. Yes, they do. Princess Leia, prin Princess Leia, and I'm like, what? She's Princess Leia now. <laughs> Princess Leia, in the original script, Princess Leia was exactly the same, except that her outfit had the crotch cut out, revealing her thick, hairy pubic hair in each and every scene. That was pretty tasty. Pretty tasty. Yeah. I liked how they tried to make her pubic hair into the same cinnamon buns, but it yeah, just yeah. wasn't quite working. Yeah, but still, like, E for effort, you know? Oh, definitely E for effort, yeah, yeah. But they, they really should have gone your... with a braid and beads. Yeah. Who's your, who was your favorite character from the original Star Wars script? Oh, man, it's so hard to say from the original Star Wars who I liked. Uh... Uh, I, I really, I, I, I found Twink Winkledink to be absolutely charming, you know? Yes, and I, I loved... Mean, that was a suave motherfucker, but, you know, I, 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 I still have a certain kind of affection for Craven Lovelust, you know? Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, now that's... A, Boba Fett's a pussy. Okay? Yeah. I yeah. said it. Even though we're not up yeah. to that movie yet, I still said it. Boba Fett is just a really cool outfit. Yes, he is. Yeah, Boba Fett is a is a is is a nice sweater at Hot Topic. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that that sweater at Hot Topic is your favorite character. Th this is true. Yeah, ridiculous. 
My favorite character is a uh, Schmoopy Doop Twink Dick. I thought Swoopy was that good. He was written very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swoopy Doop Twink Dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he he was a very good character. Um, yeah, not in my top two, obviously. <laughs> yeah, my favorite scene in the original Star Wars script is when Porkins is flying in his like X-wing and. All of the stormtroopers see Porkins coming and then fly away from him because all of the stormtroopers are Muslim. <laughs> yes. And the stormtroopers are like, let's get these rebel scum. Ooh, that's pork. I'm out. <laughs> and then, then they fly away. And eventually Porkins crashes. But not because he was shot, but just because of just the sheer weight of Porkins. Yeah. I My favorite scene, I mean, I'm just a traditionalist. My favorite scene, scene is still got to be where they nailed Luke to that cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it, that was moving. That was yeah, so Yeah, I moving. really liked it when they sang Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. That was that was a very good part, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially the little two step yep. that they did. Always yeah. look on. You're the Messiah. I should know. I followed a few. Director George Foreman had a very unique vision for Star Wars for Star Wars for uh, Starfisters, as it was originally yes. called. Because in 1976, he's going to studios and say, and he says, I have planned, I already have planned a series of eight movies. Will you fund my eight movies? I have eight movies. Eight massively budgeted movies. Will you help me make my eight movies? And people are like, no, fucking get out of here. No way. We're going to fund your eight sci-fi movies. No way. And then finally, one studio, 20th Century Fox, said, mm -hmm. okay. What movies are these? And then he just listed them off. There's Star Wars. Then there's Two Star, Two Wars. Then there's Star Wars Tokyo Drift, Star and Wars, Star yeah. 5, Star Wars 6, Wars 7, and then 2017's The Fate of These Fuckers. Yes. And those were the Star Wars movies. It was based... Star Wars... I mean, the original idea for Star Fisters was, was based on... Uh, an, an old movie serial Commander Cody. You know, that's what it was based on. So it was kind of influenced by Commander Cody and Toho Godzilla. Yes. You know, you put those two things Very together and, and you get the basic plot of of uh yeah. of, of Starfisters. If I if I really think about my favorite character from Starfisters, it's Probably Raymond Burr's character, who is a reporter, reporting on this Star War that's happening. That's where they got the title Star Wars. Yeah. It's from Aaron Burr's character. Yes. You know what I found really amazing that I really wish they would <coughs> explain more of the technical details on? Huh. You know, because, okay... We know that the fuel for the Millennial Falcon is avocado toast, but yes. how exactly does that process work, and how does how does the avocado toast change into a propellant? I think it has something to to do with the fact that it shoots Tide Pods. <laughs> you think it it shoots, it shoots Tide Pods? I mean, I know me yeah. personally, avocado can make me very gassy. Yeah. So uh, the Millennial Falcon may be may be powered by flatulence, possibly, and by snorting condoms. Yeah. So George Foreman goes to 20th Century Fox, right? And Fox, being Fox, said, "Yeah, you know what, Georgie, baby, because it's the 70s. This is great and all, but." We're Fox, so can we get a panel of white people in the film that spend the whole movie blaming the brown people for the violence? Yeah. Like, 
the Death Star wouldn't have been built were it not for Mexicans. <laughs> Are these rebels tied to MS-13? <laughs> I am sure they are. I am sure they are. Yeah. I mean, they had found out. They had found out that Rodney Allen Rippey had ties to MS-13. Yeah, yeah. Where was Hillary when Alderaan exploded? That is a damn good question. Yeah, yeah. I heard that the rebels are secretly funded by George Soros. That's what I've heard. The, the rebels are getting paid just to be rebels. Can you? Can you? Yeah. Can you imagine that? I mean, don't they yeah, have they're all fake souls? Rebels. Yeah, they're all fake rebels. There aren't any act, like actual rebels. They're all getting a paycheck. Yeah. Oh, I got to go back to Build a Bear Workshop. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go back to Build a Bear Workshop. The bear, the bear, I found really interesting. I, I and it had that really that that really spacey name, like Pedo Bear or Pedo Bear or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that was a, I thought that was a, a unique and refreshing character. Yeah, I like. I do a really good. I do a really good Im- impersonation of the big hairy monster creature best friend of the swashbuckling rogue uh here let me do the voice here let me do the voice uh, bitch where are my fritos <laughs> he, was always, he was always saying that in the movie he always bitch yeah. give me my fritos bitch i'm fucking chewbacca bitch he was just he was so lovable yeah he was really lovable i i'm really hoping that they do a. Uh, uh, like a like a like a like a Thanksgiving movie with just him, you know. I want more of him. Well, I, I I'm the- thinking a plush doll with with changeable wife beaters. Nice. Yeah. De- just to be clear, just to be clear, in all seriousness, in this house, Bunny, in my house, we call them wife hug- huggers. Wife huggers. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to be promoting violence against women, Bunny. God, and I thought you were woke. Back back in the old days when it was still kind of okay to be racist to certain groups, we used to call them guinea t-shirts. Really? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh, Emerald, you're having fun playing with that remote control. Back in my day, we used to call them uh, Indian beaters. Because <laughs> you would just get the remote and then you'd beat an Indian with it. Indian beaters. Indian beaters. The interesting thing about Star Wars is that the film of so the film eventually changed its name to Star Wars, and it was released in 1977, and it quickly bombed. Yes, it did. Like, like no one's like, what am I watching here? I'm watching some young white people being chased by the evil British people. And all of these fucking models. I don't give a shit. In fact, the film did not gain popularity until it played on KUTP Phoenix Channel 45 at 2 p.m. on a Sunday right after golf. Suddenly, the world took notice. <laughs> yes. And that is the story of Battlestar Galactica. Yes, it was. I, 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 I feel good about our coverage here. Yeah. So yeah. now I want to get personal about Star Wars, but before I do, I'd, I'd like to throw out a completely baseless conspiracy theory. Okay, those are the best. Okay, now I legally can't state this as fact, so I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna right wing it. Okay, what the right wing does when they want to when they want to spread a conspiracy theory is instead of saying it as fact, they just phrase it as a question. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do here, okay? So here's my baseless conspiracy theory. Did Harrison Ford have Carrie Fisher killed? You know, a lot of people are asking that question. A lot of people are saying that. I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people have these concerns. Because see, here's what happened, okay? 
So Harrison Ford's like fucking 30 and he makes this movie with a bunch of teenagers. Mm hmm. And so all the teenagers in the cast are looking up to fucking Harrison Ford because he's like, hey, I've been in two movies. And they're all like, oh, swoon. Yeah. Swoon. And so he's like, hey, what's your name, Carrie? It doesn't matter. Here, come over to my trailer. And they would just fuck all the time, right? Uh Uh-huh. Fucking all the time, despite the fact that Harrison Ford was, like, married and had, like, a family. They were all yeah, like which I which I always doing coke and whiskey. which I always think is just such a scumbag move. Yeah, yeah. So, so like uh, Carrie Fisher like ruins a family, nineteen year old innocent, skinny ass, drugged up Carrie Fisher on yeah. the set of Star Wars breaks up a marriage, and then. They make these movies and they lead their separate lives and yada, yada, yada. But then a few years ago, Carrie Fisher's, I don't know, cleaning the house, maybe looking for more drugs. I don't fucking know. I'm just making that up. Probably. But she finds, she finds her old diaries from that she would write ridiculously lengthy details about filming Star Wars. Really? Yeah, but the thing is, is that it's a ridiculously detailed look at 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 her emotions and and what it was like filming Star Wars, and because of that, it's seventy percent. This is what it's like to fuck a young Harrison Ford. <laughs> and so she released that. She released it as a book. It was the last book that she released. It was called The Princess Diarist, I believe is the title. And she st- she went on tour with this book. And, and yes, this book is a wonderful book. If you ever wanted to know what it's like to film a life-changing movie or fuck a young Harrison Ford, if you want to know what his body looks like, what he says during sex, what he's like when he's been coked up, <laughs> what his dick is like. It's all right here in this book. And then shortly after the release of that book, a few months after the release of that book, it, she dies. Yeah. And there was one part of me that said, oh, how much you want to bet Harrison Ford had something to do with this? <laughs> no, I have no proof. That's why I'm not saying that it happened. I am not saying that it happened. I'm, I'm just asking a question. That's right. Just asking the question. That's I'm just it. asking a question that a lot of people are asking. Did Harrison Ford somehow have Carrie Fisher killed? Mm-hmm. Just, just, just like, just like I am asking the question. Wasn't Kenny Baker an amputee? Kenny Baker. Kenny, Kenny Baker, Baker was an, was an amputee while he did the first Star Wars movie, and shortly thereafter yep. he found Jesus, and his limbs just went all back on it's interesting because kenny baker was actually only one foot tall he had to wear stilts in order to be in this film quite amazing yes he was he was actually he was actually the live action version of inch high private eye (laughs) so that's interesting so so let's get let's get personal a little bit about star wars okay uh, let's not talk about the history of Star Wars because that's fucking ridiculous. I am as old as Star Wars. Really? Okay. That is a fact. Yeah, I was born in March of 77 and Star Wars came out in May of 77. So I'm always happy when people are talking about like the staying power of Star Wars. Like I know people aren't talking about me. Yeah. But when people talk about this massive franchise is 41 years old, but is still kicking. And I'm like, you're damn right. <laughs> There's no slowing this franchise down. This franchise is still young. This franchise still has some life in it. That's right. But I was thinking about Star Wars, because watching this movie really got me thinking. Because growing up, I loved the original Star Wars trilogy. I love these three Star Wars movies. Growing up, I absolutely love them. But then I started thinking, but why didn't, I become a huge Star Wars fan as an adult. 
Because right now yeah. I could give a crap. I don't own any like collectibles, and like I didn't see the last three Star Wars movies in theaters. You know, like it, like Star Wars, I don't give a shit. So I started thinking, like, how did I not become a freaking collector? Like, you know, like one of the big Star Wars fans. And I figured it out. It always okay. goes back to my family and my horrible childhood. Everything does. Yes, it does. So this is what happened. OK, I figured it out. Like, like this was an epiphany. This was an epiphany. My older brother, Joe, he's four years older than me. Uh-huh. He had all the toys. My parents bought him every fucking Star Wars toy. He had the Millennium Falcon, he had Luke's X-Wing, he had Vader's TIE Fighter, he had Leia's little ship, he had all the action the little tiny action figures. He had all the toys. When I was like three and four and six. Um but as is the case, I'm always getting screwed. So I also liked Star Wars as much as my brother did. But number one, I wasn't allowed to touch my brother's Star Wars toys. He would get, Stevie's touching my Star Wars toys. Stevie, stay away from his Star Wars toys. Those are Joe's. So I wasn't allowed to touch his Star Wars toys because they were his. But here's the thing. Then I would say, oh, can I have Star Wars toys? My parents aren't going to buy me toys they've already bought. Yeah. So growing up, I loved Star Wars, and I was not allowed to own anything Star Wars. That sucks and is stupid. And that stopped me from being a bigger fan of Star Wars growing up and into as a teenager and as an adult because I didn't grow up wanting to go out and fucking buy everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the only Star Wars thing I have in this house right now is a lightsaber I bought for $5 for story time and uh, a Chewbacca backpack I gave to Bella because it was free. I used to get so much free stuff from clearance. But you have you have some costumes. Don't you have a Boba Fett and a, oh. an X-Wing fighter? Uh, Boba Fett mask got destroyed. Thank you, Eleanor and Maxwell. And I have an X-wing outfit, but it's not it's not complete. There's one or two pieces that I'm missing from it. Yeah. But those again, those I bought at a consignment store in Shawnee, Oklahoma, for five dollars each. Yeah. So it's not like I I went out and bought this really nice fucking Boba Fett costume, you know? Not heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why I didn't grow up into this huge, massive Star Wars fan that has to wait in line for like two days for a Star Wars movie and is super excited and, and is collecting all of these fucking toys and all of this shit. And is so, oh, when are we going to learn about Ray's past? Like, I don't give a fuck about any of that. I just don't like Ray. I just I, I can't. I, I had seen uh, Last Jedi. And yeah. it's like, as long as Mark Hamill's on the screen, this is a good movie. As soon as he leaves, it's get, oh, it yeah. just it just gets in again. Yeah, Mark Hamill is fucking great in that. But 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 yeah, I think that if I was allowed to own Star Wars toys when I was little, oh yeah, I'd be I'd be one of these Star Wars fanatics. Yeah, but my parents either did me a favor or screwed me. Um, let me put it this way. If they did you a favor, they didn't mean it. Yeah, no, they absolutely did not mean it. But on the positive side, I never read a single Star Wars book. I I read positive. You know, any of those fucking books they made, they made a bajillion books. I read the three movie adaptations and that was it. Oh, you never got in to the Star Wars extended universe? No, I got a fucking life. Yeah, because that's a fucking cult. The Star Wars extended universe was a cult. Yeah. It was a fucking cult. It yeah. was a goddamn fucking cult. And that's... You know, it's always a person and... who read every book and had to talk your ear off about fucking, oh, uh, Luke's wife. Uh. 
that's where I come down very pro George Lucas, even though I personally think George Lucas is he's a wanker. He's just a wanker. He's he's just a yeah. you know he's he's not the artist he wanted to be, and he's a very bitter fucking man because of it. Yeah, I I, I don't I don't blame George Lucas for the things that he does to his universe and things he, that he does to his movies because he lets us do it too. Yeah. He has never sued anybody over a Star Wars book or a recut of Star Wars or a parody of Star Wars or anything oh, yeah. like that. So if yeah. he if he if he lets us do that he gets to do it too. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 yeah, I Okay, you got a really good point cuz I was going to talk about criticisms of Star Wars and one of the first ones is I hate the fact that he redid his films with CGI and shit. Yeah. One of the things that I used to like about seeing the original Star Wars is that if you look really closely like there's this bad there's this battle happening in outer space and all these spaceships are flying in outer space, but you can see the black box around each spaceship. There, in the original, like, yeah, that was always disconcerting. Yeah. It's something that I had noticed on uh, in, in the original Star Wars, just like I had previously I, I always, with Star Trek. I always liked that because, because even though I'm seeing this amazing sci-fi film, you see that kind of little slightly darker black box around each spaceship as it flies through space and you go okay so that's how they did it you know it was a little bit of a like when you see beetlejuice and they're doing all these special effects but they're not realistic so you're like oh i see how they did that yeah i see how they stretched his head i see what they used to do that ghoulish effect it was all very realistic like like practical effects. Yeah. Well, in this particular not- case with Star Wars, when you get that when you get that kind of effect, and again, it was all over Star Trek. Every time they had a spaceship, oh, when you get when you oh, get yeah. that kind of effect, that's because they're still doing um, back projection. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're doing the back projection of the stars, and then they're they're shooting the image around it, so it's like not quite the same light. The one around the ship winds up being brighter. Yeah. And they try to minimize it by cutting down the frame as much as they can. That's why you get some really unusual shapes. Yeah. Yeah. But I liked that. Yeah. I liked that. Because it's like, oh, that's a nice... Everything about this world this universe is just unlike our universe so i like the little hey here's realism it's like if you saw a star wars movie and suddenly someone stopped and sat at a picnic table yeah you'd go oh that's weird oh okay (laughs) i guess these are kind of humans so so i've got some criticisms of star wars because i don't want to just let's not suck the dick of star wars just yet yeah because I love this film, the original. Of course, I love it. It's a, an amazing film, but it's not perfect. I've got I've got criticisms. Uh huh. The dialogue is rough as shit. Just because you can write sci-fi sounding dialogue doesn't mean that it's dialogue that any normal person would ever say out loud. Yeah. And you really hear, even in particular, that that whole that whole line of shit that Princess Leia comes out with at the beginning of the movie to Peter Cushing. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no human speaks like that. Yeah, like uh, like that whole thing that that uh, Han Solo says. I'm gonna calculate the Nava computer. Fucking whatever. Yeah. He, 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 they they always used to say they always used to say 
uh, you you can write this shit, but you can't say it. Yeah. Yeah. This is our most desperate hour. No one says that. No. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous when you hear it out loud like that. Yeah. Rich, powerful. Listen, if you were to rescue her, the reward would be like, why are you fucking talking like that? Yeah. <laughs> I am confused. I I kind of suspect he wanted to get a, a, a feeling of innocence. Well, you know what? I just don't think he's very good. That's 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 what I think. Because let's face facts. Yeah. He made he made Star Wars. Okay. Mm -hmm. He didn't really quite make Empire Strikes Back. That is true. That is true. That's why it's the really good one. Yeah. Because he didn't have his entire mitts on it. Yeah. So the like better ones are always ones that he wasn't so hands on for. So so like he got lucky with American Graffiti, which is a movie I absolutely love and and I I, I kept waiting for George Lucas to get back to that kind of filmmaking. Okay, okay, if you're yep. not going to give us more Star Wars, what are you going to give us? You yep. know? I mean, Willow? THX 1138. Get ready for the THX extended universe. Oh, wasn't that a boring fucking movie? Yup! Oh, man, yeah. That, the, the only thing that made me happy was seeing Sid Haig. And that, that only lasts yeah. so long. That was a long-ass time ago. I tried. Yeah. I tried. With THX 1138. But Jesus Christ. A, another problem that I have, and this, I feel that this is apocryphal. Yeah. But God damn it, Williams. God damn it, John Williams. Tone it down. <laughs> this is my problem. The music is so big and so grandiose and so over the top that it adds to the greatness of the film. So much so that I feel that if you remove the music, is this still a great film? That's I don't think always, it is. That's always an interesting question. I my 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 friend Tom and I used to watch Jurassic Park on mute with closed captioning and god damn it that movie sucks. <laughs> when you can't hear the dinosaurs, when you can't hear the dialogue and when you can't hear that music that is so fucking loud that it's immediately jarring your fucking ear canal, <laughs> raping your ear canal with its grandioseness, then that is not a good movie and something tells me that if you remove fucking uh, John Williams from Star Wars. This then, this is a pretty good science fiction movie. If we removed the John Williams, you would think it was a good science fiction movie. I'm confused. Yes, yeah, I love Star Wars, but if you removed John Williams' music entirely from it, I think you would be left with a pretty good science fiction movie. I don't know because I I have a hard time categorizing categorizing Star Wars as science fiction to begin with. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a space western. Yeah, space western. Do you ever want to? Do you ever want to punch anybody who, when you talk about Star Wars, brings up the hero's journey? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of my sentiments on that one. Yeah. Here's here's another thing I want to talk about when it comes to Star Wars, okay? Okay. There is no way whatso fucking ever, no way in hell that George Lucas made this first Star Wars movie with nine movies planned. No, no, a, and he kept. I, he always kept changing his mind and flat out lying about it. I, because that's the story now. Oh, George Lucas had 
nine films plan and he decided to focus on this one part bullshit he made a good science fiction film that was so popular that he made up other films but, but there he are had... things that happen. there are things that happen in the star wars movie that make no sense if you're thinking about a trilogy the fucking mm-hmm. kiss that 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 uh they share yeah that that uh, good luck Mwah. let me kiss you because we're brother and sister I and, think and fucking, I think he had it planned, but he didn't have it mapped out. Well, maybe planned. He, he had entered. he had an idea. Yeah, you know, but that's really all it was. It was just an idea, because even hey. even when when Jedi came out, Return of the Jedi, the original Jedi. <clears throat> He had said then that he was going to do three movies before and then three movies after. Yeah. And then later on, later on when he wasn't getting shit done, because we're talking like, what, two decades, like 20 fucking years before you get to the first set of movies? Yeah. I remember, I remember there was even a Bloom County strip over it. Yeah. You know where where Binkley had a lightsaber and he was dressed up as Luke Skywalker and he cut up he cut up a uh, George Lucas saying Jedi's don't wait for 9 years <laughs> for yeah. the end of this saga and it was like fucking 9 years fuck that it, it, this took forever and even even before the prequels came out George Lucas was saying he he never said that. He never said about three more movies from the beginning and three from the end. He said he never said yeah. that. Yeah. Until he was and, making and, the and, first and three. Greedo. Yeah, and Greedo shot first. Yeah, and it was always Anakin's story. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was always Anakin's story. The thing that pissed me off is that he, he, he it says in this first Star Wars movie uh, a a pupil, a a pupil of mine named Darth Vader betrayed and murdered your father. Yeah. And then in the second film, you learn, oh, Darth Vader didn't kill your father. Darth Vader is your father. So in the beginning of the third film, like Luke Skywalker goes, hey Obi Wan, why did why did you lie to me? Because you fucking lied to me. Because Vader didn't kill my father. Vader is my father. And and. And George Lucas actually wrote in, well, what I said was true from a certain point of view. Yeah, you. And and it's like even six year old me is like, okay, that's fucking bullshit. (laughs) That's just bad writing. That's just bad script writing. And you're trying to cover your ass. Mm hmm. Fucking ridiculous. But yeah, there's no way that he had that he had all of these movies planned. He was just, he's making, he was making this shit up as he went along. Yeah. He might've had some notes, a general sketchy outline, you know, something like that. Some rough guide, but no, no. When he first said it, said that he had no idea or, or yeah. you're completely right. The movies would not go as such patchwork. Yeah. But one thing I one thing I really wanted to talk about if we're talking about Star Wars, I remember quite vividly the year 1984. 77, I was seven years old at the time. Yes. 1984. That was when they had the world television premiere of Star Wars. The first time ever that Star Wars was going to be shown on TV. Yes. It, and it was hosted by freaking Mark Hamill. And it featured in the beginning like the six or seven minute package of the history of the Star Wars series. And I recorded it on beta. Really? And nice. I, yeah, I recorded I recorded Star Wars on beta max tape and I watched it over and over again. And the thing that really struck me was they played scenes from outside theaters that were going to be playing a Star Wars movie. And 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 people waiting in line for a Star Wars film or people at the theater that's playing Star Wars. And it all looks like a fucking hippie cult. Yes, it does. It's 1977 and people are are dancing in the lobby and shit like a goddamn hippie commune. And there's a specifically one scene. 
that burned into my mind. One woman in line for a Star Wars film is dancing with some other people and they're wearing Star Wars shirts. And the woman yells, says, we've been here for six days and it's great. No, it's not. No, it's That's a not. Fucking cult. That is a fucking cult is what you're describing right there. I wouldn't wait six days to see God. <laughs> you know, I mean. No. Yeah, yeah. We've been here for six days and it's great. And then I was like, yeah, I, I when we when I was writing the podcast, when I was writing about about Star Wars, I just kept he, hearing that over and over again. We've been here for six days and it's great. So this morning I went and looked for that video, and sure enough, it's on fucking YouTube. The, the <laughs> beginning of the world premiere of Star Wars, and that's the line there. The, the fucking girl in in line. We've been here for six days, and it's great, and it's amazing because it's 1984, and Mark Hamill is there. I've uh, Star Wars has been a part of my life for seven years now, and there, there's a part of me that just wanted to go through the screen and be like, "Save your fucking money, <laughs> for the love of God, Mark." Save your I know, right? It's 1984 and you're like on the top of the fucking globe, but save your fucking money, man. Mm -hmm. You're going to be doing voiceover work to pay your mortgage for the love of God. Save your money. Disney's <laughs> not coming for you for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just but, love I just love how he does not take himself. I, I think he had enough success and enough fame doing the voiceover work, in particular the Joker, for him to kind of puzzle out that fame is kind of bullshit. Yeah, yeah. You know, because he, he has such a very nonchalant attitude toward what he's who he's become. And I find that kind of refreshing. It's like the Tao of Steve. He wanted to be famous and he got famous and then he lost fame. Mm -hmm. And that's when he realized, oh, fame is stupid and I don't need it. And that's when fame came back. Yes. So now we've got an older Mark Hamill who's famous again, but also doesn't give a shit about it. Like, I like the Mark yeah. Hamill we have now. I follow him on Instagram, and he's fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. God, he just, God he, bless his heart. Would bless him. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but Star Wars was the first blockbuster, essentially. I think that really goes to Jaws. Okay. Well, well uh, Star Wars was the first summer blockbuster. Oh, okay. Star I could Wars go with was, that. Star Wars created the summer movie season. I remember when big movies came out between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah, yeah, the real run up to the Academy Awards where you had a chance to actually see the fucking movies. Yeah, but now only boring Oscar contenders are released in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Also, let's not let's also not forget that Star Wars single-handedly starting started the trend of choking white men with your mind. Yeah, that was that was a shame. That was fandom getting out of hand. Yeah, yeah. so to speak. But um, um, yeah, but some yeah, but sometimes I'll still see people like like choking old white men with their minds. Yeah. It's sad. It's always sad. Okay. Um. Uh. I'm gonna walk out of this room and down the hallway for a second, okay? For the screaming, yes. yes. Walking down the hallway. I'm getting near. I am staring at people. Okay, I'm walking back. Okay. Down the hallway. She made it! Away from the people. You made your daughter cry by leaving the room! 
Oh, God damn it. I made Eleanor cry by leaving the room. Now I got to go back. Eleanor, Daddy's here. Daddy's just going to finish she the knows, podcast, not okay? Her I'm not leaving. With, with now us. she wants you. Leaving us okay. with us. She'll just lay She's really tired. Okay. Um, Eleanor. Okay. She might suck with here. your teeth. But... Oh, Give her over she here. Laugh. She might laugh. Oh, I don't know okay. if she wants to do that. That's probably a really bad idea. Oi. Super loud. Oi. Come here. Oi. 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 There you go. Oi. Oi. Okay. Oi. Well, Bunny, that's all I've got for Star Wars. That Oi. is all I got for Star Wars as well, I think. I think because again, it's it's like what else can we say besides what we said that would be new about Star Wars? I mean, we've been speaking about yeah. it for like yeah, twenty five fucking years or so. I don't want to talk. Too much about Star Wars. This is a guys. I swear to God, you guys did this. I swear to God, you guys did this to the baby. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Next week, we're we're watching Star Wars Two: The Return of the Star Wars. Yeah. This time around, the cast of Star Wars goes to space. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I thought they that was funny. Yes. But what is this? It's missing. The cast of Star Wars in book? space. <laughs> Next week we're doing the second Star Wars film, Two Star Two Wars. Yes. Did you know the original script for Star Wars was just Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Nice. <laughs> two Star Two Wars, aka the Cold One. Yeah. <laughs> AKA Star Wars, now with 25% more Muppets. <laughs> you gotta love Muppets. You just gotta. Yeah, you gotta love Muppets. STD. Back when they were actually Muppets. Can yeah. you do a re record of STD without me? Maybe. Uh, so that's next week. Also, next week, we're gonna watch Angela Lansbury masturbate. I'm, I'm oddly. I, I am really looking forward to that. Yeah. You would. <laughs> you know who might stand in for me? Are you ready for it? Yeah. Okay. Pregnant. And also, we're going to be talking about Godzilla next week. In and, my, uh, we have a yeah. press conference that we're going to have to do. In my wildest dreams, I never thought I would see Angela Be- <laughs> A- Angela Lansbury's O face. So, uh, so yeah. yeah, I'm thrilled. Yeah, but that that's basically what you're going to be getting next week. But now that I'm looking back at this episode, the However, ups and downs, the highs I mean, and lows. It will be 100% less. No I gotta say, you know, I think. And this is just my humble opinion that this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a pretty. I think this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a good episode. Oh, but not a damn good episode. I get it, Bunny. You don't love me. Why do you hurt me, Bunny? Why do you hurt me? It's okay. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams, and I am Reverend Steve, and. On behalf of Wait, Bella there. and Maxwell and Eleanor and Deanna and Destiny yes. and Emerald no. and Natasha no. and no. everybody else, no. I just want to no. say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, <laughs> you <laughs> godless <laughs> heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy tops. Do, 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 do. The only reason we're doing these Star Wars movies is that I can... I can uh, read Bunny my Bib Fortuna fan fiction. (laughs) Only reason. I have so much hardcore pornographic Bib Fortuna fan fiction that I have just been waiting to unload on people. So, uh, yeah, we'll be getting to that uh, two weeks from today because he's in the third one. So next week we're talking about the good one. So I, I will actually be talking about the history of Star Wars next week because next week's the good one. Oh, it's okay. all downhill from there. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Just being honest. Do 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 do. Cut and print.